welcome, welcome to week three. This is our final part um, of this conversation. And we've been talking about from shame, guilt, and condemnation to bloom. We have been discussing the fact that many of us go through issues and we go through shame, we go through guilt. And, and, and many times we get stuck at that place and we don't ever get to the point where we recover and get restored and begin to blossom and begin to fruit. So for those of you that haven't been a part of this conversation, there's whole two parts behind you. You need to go and listen to it. It was amazing testimonies from Dr. Loretta and, and Pastor Liz sharing their own life stories. And one of them, I share a bit about my own life story. And we've just been talking about this topic, looking at it from a biblical perspective, not just for women, but for both for women and men so share this this with someone as you come in to share the link with someone so they can tune in and be a part of this conversation saying this is the third part of it and we're just going to go straight in to our questions and then we will conclude today's uh with practical tools to help us so last week i kind of hinted that we're going to be looking at ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 because the Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of the world, rulers of darkness of the world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Personally, for me, the Bible is telling us we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Many a times we think that our problem is people, but there are spirits that are responsible. I mean, one of my friends shared a testimony with me. She says, everything was all right with me until I moved to a particular area. And once I moved to that area, I lost my husband. Once I moved to that area, I lost a child. I lost my job. I lost my own self-esteem. So the, uh, personally, I believe that there are principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places that control certain areas. All of a sudden, you were well, you were fine, you come to a particular area, you move into a particular house, things all hell begins to break loose. You are all of a sudden, you are depressed, mental health seems to be on the hide, having suicidal thoughts, you feel oppressed and, 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 and depressed. So I believe that what the Bible says, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against uh, uh, as principalities, against powers and against rulers of darkness, of the dark world that is fighting against us, and it is in their interest to keep you and I where we are. It is in their interest to maintain setting, uh, uh, setting standards. It is in their interest to maintain setting limitations. So also there are some of us that want to come out of the situations that we are in, but we are being stopped from coming out. We cannot even see a way out. This is, this is my mm -hmm. take on this. Topic. Dr. Loretta, what would you have to say about, about this scripture? This is something I'm very familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, and so and I'm treading lightly here. So um, yeah, to understand that we are fighting against, we are not fighting against flesh and blood. I think at some point, I would say at least in my Christian journey, um, we kind of acted like spirits don't exist. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like these, it's only the Holy Spirit and that's it. You know, uh, you know, there is no other spirits out there besides the Holy Spirit. And oh, over this journey, I've learned that there are spirits at work. Um, and when you are faced with challenges or when you are faced with demonic spirits or when you are, are faced with, I remember a time back where I had a student before I was even, you know, before I was even in ministry, you know, I, I had a student and he would just tear up the classroom. He would torture the room. We like, we had routines. We would take the kids, line them up and take the kids out because this kid was tearing up the room. And I remember I grabbed hold of this baby one day and I just started praying because I could not handle it. This child starts screaming at me. No, it's not going to work. No, I'm not letting go. Now, mind you, at the time, I didn't even know who I was. The demon told me who I was. Mm -hmm. So we know that, hey, look, y'all, that's why a lot of you, we hear it said all the time. That's why some people just don't like you when you walk in a room or sometimes you people just, it's not you. It is the spirit that is within you that makes their demon uncomfortable. 
And so I've learned in this journey that while we are praying and we are trying to deal with fleshly matters that we really have to go to the root. I love Tony Evans saying, if what you see is all that you see, then you're not seeing all that needs to be seen. Mm -hmm. So basically he's telling you that you really need to pray for those spirits. And as a tool and as a resource, understand and know that there is nothing that you're going to face that some character throughout the Bible oh. have not already dealt with and gave us a prescription on how to deal yeah. with that spirit, yeah. on how to deal with that thing. Even if it, if, you know, even Christ himself kind of told us, you know, multiple times how to deal with spirits and, and how to deal with those wicked things that are that. So you, you can have where you can deal with spirits and you can deal with, um, the wickedness that is trying to come against you. And remember with this being that, that you have power that with the death and resurrection of Christ, he gives you power over all things and don't Amen. fool yourself into believing that they don't exist. That's it. That's first. Don't fool yourself. Second, okay. get the Bible, look for the situation that you're dealing with the, the type of demons that you're dealing with the situations that you deal with and use the, use the prescription, follow the directions. As I said, follow the directions according to the scriptural text that God has given you. Amen. 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 Pastor Liz, over to you. Amen. Amen. Just to add um, to what Dr. Loretta has already said, I'm just going to quickly go to the scripture. The Bible says in the book of Revelations 12 from verse nine, I'm going to read it quickly. It says, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they mm. overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of the testimony and they mm. loved not their lives unto death. So we can mm. see on, um, before the devil was cast out of heaven, the Bible says that there was a war in heaven. There was a mm. war. So we know that there's a first heaven, the second heaven and the third heaven. There was a mm. war in heaven, which is where God, God is, the first heaven. And it says Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought against the angels of God with his own angels, and the dragon was cast out of the heaven into the earth. So we know that the serpent, great deceiver, is in the earth. So he mm. ruled the atmosphere of mm. the earth. The Bible says that in Genesis also that the serpent came to the woman in the garden and said, did God not say? So the serpent is aware of who God is. The serpent mm. God, the devil knows the word of God. The same devil tempted Jesus and said, uh, it is written. So the devil knows the scripture. The devil was once an angel. The devil was in heaven. But because he wanted to assume that position, you know, as God, he fought against God and he was kicked out. So he's, he, the devil and his angels are in the earth. Scripture says that he goes about rowing to and fro the earth, seeking whom he may devour. So at every point in time, the devil is on a mission to kill, to steal, and to destroy, as the scripture tells us. So we're not ignorant of his devices. We cannot sit and say that he doesn't exist. Like Pastor Loretta, Dr. Loretta was sharing, that you walk into places and spaces, demons manifest because of the spirit of God that is in you, because you carry the power of God that in you. Once the devil, you walk into a place that is ruled by a territorial spirit or someone who is possessed by a devil, they automatically recognize that there is something in you and they begin to run away from you or try to do things to stop you from, you know, functioning in that space or in that um, region. But I want to encourage everyone that's listening to us that we should never take for granted the fact that the Bible is true. Mm -hmm. Every single word mm -hmm. of scripture is real. So if you believe Amen. God can provide for you. The scripture also tells you that God has given you authority to walk over serpents and scorpions and all mm -hmm. over the works of the devil mm -hmm. and nothing will harm you. So the mm -hmm. devil is there. The, his demons are there. The, the, the wicked uh, principalities that rule 
wicked places, in high places, they do exist. But we've been empowered by God. We've been given his word. The Bible says in that we have overcome him by the words of our testimonies, that we shared our testimonies today. That is um, a, a way or an opportunity for us to continue to knock the devil down and through the Amen. blood and because Jesus has paid the ultimate price for us to be reconciled Amen. back to God. So the blood Amen. of Jesus will always cry out for better things. The blood of Jesus will speak for us as long as we believe in his blood. And we can Amen. never, never, never be ignorant. That's why Ephesians um, sticks that you read says we wrestle not against flesh and blood there's a constant war there was a war in the heaven before we even showed up and that yeah. war so ongoing because the enemy mm. has not found a resting place the the final judgment has not come so he's in the edge running to and fro that's why we must always put on the full armor of god the same yeah. scripture says put on the full armor of god that you may be able to resist him you cannot resist the devil if you are not covered you can't push the devil back or you cannot overcome these wicked principalities if you're not walking in faith, if you're not mm. walking in words. So we have mm. to be equipped as Christians, as believers, to know we've got the authority. God has empowered us. God has given us a name that's higher than any other name. Since so at the mention of the name of Jesus, that mm. everything must bow. So principalities, mm. wicked rulers, you know, wicked schemes must bow to the name of Jesus. But how often do we call the name of Jesus? How often do we believe that this word is true? How often do you recognize that what you're dealing with could be a territorial power that has, you know, ruled even before you came into the world, you know, in your bloodline, in your family line, even in the region that you live, there are powers like um, um, Minister Gertrude was sharing error. There are powers that rule in that place. But once you step in as a Christian, you've come to take dominion. He says, I've given you dominion over all that I've created. So as you step in, everything around you should shift so that the power mm. of God and the presence of God that you carry begin to rule in that sphere in the name of Jesus. Amen. So I just want to encourage every one of us do mm -hmm. not be ignorant of the devices yeah. of the wicked. There are devices, yeah. schemes that will be planned, but if you are yeah. armored, if you are covered, if you put on the full armor of God, you're able to resist. And don't go resisting no devil if you don't know the Lord. It says, Paul, I know. Who are you? <laughs> yes, I know. Who are no. you? Like the Lord was here, you know, she was empowered by God to mm. deal with the situation. But if you're mm. not empowered, power to deal with the situation don't call the name of jesus because the devil will beat you black and blue the devil Amen. will put you where he wants to put you you've got to be empowered to know that and if you're not empowered you've got sisters mm -hmm. so call on that can strengthen yeah. whatever you're dealing with Amen. Amen. And if, okay. So I, I thought about what, what, what pastor elizabeth said this and i, I thought of, it, it made me think of something ladies and gentlemen gentlemen and ladies as Pastor Elizabeth said, if you know Jesus Christ, the Bible teaches us that one can put a thousand, mm -hmm. but two, mm -hmm. 10,000. You have to get out of this modern mindset of me, 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 I, only I. Mm -hmm. The Bible teaches us where two or three are gathered together, touching and agreeing on anything, mm -hmm. it shall be done. Mm -hmm. And have, so we have to learn to get ourselves a prayer partner, mm. one that we know we can trust. I understand everybody can't be trusted, but you you have to get yourself that prayer partner because when you're dealing with principalities, see, there's mm. some principalities that I'm equipped to deal with. And then mm. there's some that Pastor Elizabeth may be equipped better equipped to deal with. If mm. me and Pastor Elizabeth can get back to back, and shoulder to shoulder, and we get to praying about that thing. See, the enemy doesn't have a way to come in and come against us. So now, instead of us putting a thousand to flight, oh. we got 10,000 that oh. is running from us from every way. You see, your enemies oh. will come one way, but they will leave. Seven so nine. you have to. So I want to encourage anyone who's listening to this and 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 taking and taking on what Pastor Elizabeth is saying. You, you stand boldly. You declare the name of the Lord, but get yourself a prayer partner, somebody that you know that you can trust, somebody that can go to bat for you and with you, so that when those demons come against you, when you walk into a principality.
Mm. When you walk into a principality, and I'm going to tell you something, I know a little bit about that. When you mm. walk into those things, mm. you have somebody with you that can hold your arms up when they uh. get tired. Mm. When you're done and you're ready to say, God, I'm done. You mm. have somebody that can pray with you and bring you through and bring you out of that guilt and bring you out of that shame and bring you into victory or bloom as we are talking about today. Amen. Amen. I mean, you, your story, you were just saying, takes me back to Daniel. Mm. When you were saying that there are different people or different uh, levels when it comes to the spiritual realm, that if you're not equipped to deal with a level, find you a prayer partner who is capable because Daniel prayed. And the Bible says that even before he prayed, when he prayed, the answer was released. The angel mm -hmm. was coming, but that angel was not equipped to deal with the king, the prince of Persia. So the prince of Persia was able to withstand him for all of those days until God sent an archangel because it took an archangel who had the, 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 the power and the authority to deal with that prince of Persia before the angel could be released to bring the answer. So, yes, find you a prayer partner. And I want to home in this. I mean, everywhere we see Jesus when demons were just flying out like that. They were just confessing. I mean, you, you saw that mad, mad man who was in disgrace and condemned and, and chained to, 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 mm. to the cave. And we are told, you need to see where this story starts from. Because even before when Jesus made up his mind that he was going to the other side, the principality came to withstand him from here to stop him because we are told that whilst they were in the boat and Jesus was resting, the storm came. So there's mm -hmm. principalities. I want you to understand in as much as God has given us power over the enemy, you've got to understand that this enemy has got a level of power because God had given him powers. And he is the ruler of this place. And so even before Jesus gets to the other side, the principalities rise up against and they came in the form of the storm because they wanted to destroy until Jesus quite in the storm. And when he got to the other side, they began to beg and say that, please do not cast us, don't cast us out of the region because they have an assignment in the region. They've got an assignment to do in that area. So don't cast us out of the region. It, it's all right. You just cast us out of this man here, but we've got to remain in this region because this is our territory and we've got assignment in this territory. That is how you can enter into a territory that you were free of everything and you walk in and then mental health is now knocking on your door. Now cancer is knocking on your door. Now your marriage is in crisis because you have walked into a region that is controlled by cancer. You walked into a region that is controlled by divorce. You have walked into a region that is controlled by depression, drug use, gang violence, because that's the region that you have gone into. So when you get into a region, pray. You buy a house, pray. You relocate to a place, pray. Let God reveal to you the territory that you are entering into and what is prevalent and what is the principality and the power that is in that area and let God begin to help you deal with it and give you power and authority over it in the name of Jesus. I just want to read one last scripture on this topic, and then we'll move on to our next subject. It's a scripture that I like, it's Zechariah chapter 1, and reading from verse 18 to, to 20, and this is what it says. Then I looked up, and there before me were four horns. Verse 19, I asked the angel who was speaking to me, what are these? He answered me, these are the horns that scattered Judah. Israel and Jerusalem. Then the Lord showed me four craftsmen and I asked, what are these coming to do? He mm. answered, these are the horns that scattered Judah so that no one could raise their head, but the craftsmen have come to terrify them and throw these horns of the nations who lifted up their horns against the land of Judah and scattered its people. Did you hear that? He says that these are the horns that are operational in Judah, in, in Israel, and in Jerusalem. These are the horns. And they said, anyone that tries to raise up their head, horns are demonic entity. Horns represent authority. So these are the authority that are reigning, that anyone that tries to lift up their horn, anyone that tries to be restored, anyone that tries to be healed, anyone that tries to be delivered, anyone that wants to move up, anyone that wants to follow their ambition, anyone that wants to follow their dreams, their vision, it cuts them off. 
because that is what is ruling. No one should be able to rise up here. And so these are horns and these authorities are meant to suppress you and keep you where you are. But then we are praying over you today that God is sending master craftsmen who are coming to tear down these horns from over your life. The horns that operate in your family that sees to it that you are constantly in shame and disgrace. The horns that operate in your family that sees to it that your family is constantly condemned. Nothing good comes out of that name. You mention your family's name and people just suck their teeth at you because they know that family too well. Mm -hmm. It is full of divorcees. It is full of people giving birth out of wedlock. It is full of nobody's drunkards, alcoholics. I pray in the name of Jesus. Then the Lord showed me four craftsmen and asked, what are these coming to do? He answers, these are the horns that scattered Judah so that no one could raise up their head. Whatever is scattering in your family so that no one can raise up their head. But the craftsmen have come to terrify them and throw them down. May God terrify them and throw every situation down, every principality, power, witch and warlock that is operational in your family that stopped you from moving up. May God terrify them and throw down the horns. Sometimes it is nations because he goes up to say that these nations who lifted up their horns against the land of Judah to scatter it. Sometimes it is a whole nation that is fighting you. Sometimes it is a whole cohort of people that are fighting you. You think your problem is that one woman? No. It is a whole area. It's a whole community that is arisen against you. It is a whole nation that is risen against you because you are a child of God. But I pray over you in the name of Jesus that whatever suppresses you this day is giving loose, is leaving you, is releasing you in the name of Jesus because you've got to bloom. You have got to blossom in your season. You have got to come out of that cocoon. You cannot remain there for the rest of your life. Your time to blossom has come. Your time to stretch out has come. Your time to expand has come. Your time to be restored has come. Your time to be delivered has come. Your time to be healed has come. And so walk into it and step into it in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise and we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. One of the questions that people have asked me or have said is sometimes walking away from your place of shame or walking away from your place of abuse or condemnation is the right thing to do. I'm not saying in all situations, but at some situations, that is just the right thing to do. But people struggle with it. Can you just share a little bit of light on maybe why are people struggling and how can I walk out? We struggle with it because it becomes our identity. You know, we struggle, you know, you hear people say, say sanctified people who are filled with the Holy Ghost. Like we believe God for cancer, but we don't believe him for depression. Oh. We, we believe God for um, a, a financial breakthrough, but we don't believe him for that. We don't believe him for diabetes or high blood pressure. Um, you know, we, we have this certain magical place that we put God in. And so mm -hmm. when our guilt, our hurt and our shame sometimes become our identity. Mm -hmm. And if we walk away from it, then who are we? Mm -hmm. Who are you? So then you wow. got to figure out how to re-identify yourself. And that requires work. Mm -hmm. That requires change. So I have to be, when I no longer say I'm a victim of abuse and I'm going to be something else, that means I have to do the work to become something else. Mm. I'm no longer going to be identified as that teen mother who lives in the projects who's from the hood. That required work. Mm -hmm. So we can hold on to our shame because we don't know who we are and we don't mm. know who God is calling us to be. We all want to be identified as somebody. We all want to be a part of a group. We all want to belong. But when we don't know who we are in Christ, we will hold on to those things that identify our guilt and our shame. It is when we identify who we are in Christ, who God has called us to be, or even who we, who, what is the vision? What is the dream that he's given you? When we begin to identify that, and begin to do the work to start working towards that thing, then we can walk away from our guilt and our shame because the Bible teaches us that we owe no debt to sin. On Sunday, I'm going to, I'm actually going to, to, to even preach about that on Sunday. And that is over in, in Romans 
8 and 10 and 11. He said, but if Christ is in you, even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the spirit gives you life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give you life to do to your mortal body because the spirit lives in you. So then going on to verse number 12, it says, therefore, brothers and sisters, we have no, ob we have, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Mm -hmm. My obligation, your obligation, and any other person who's watching or listening to this call, your obligation is not to this flesh. It is not to the sins. It is not to the things, the shame, the guilt. That's not where your obligation lies. Your obligation lies in Jesus the Christ. Your obligation lies in God because you owe no debt to them. You owe no debt to shame. You owe no debt to sin. So you can freely walk away from it and walk into what God has called you to do and how he has called you to do it. So that is why we, we don't just simply walk away because we need to know where we walk into. It's human nature to want to know where we're going. Oh. How many times have God said, even for us as ministers, God have said, go across the street. And we'd be like, oh, what are we going to do when we get there? <laughs> what do you want me to do? How long am I going to be there? Oh. And who, better yet, and who the people I suppose to service when I get there? And why I got to service that group of people? We want to know it all. So to walk away from shame and guilt, that means you don't know. You don't absolutely know where God is taking you. You just know that you're following the God that will take you. Amen. 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 Wow. 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 Saints, I picked a few things on here. Um, you, I mean, the biggest thing in all of this is because the shame, guilt, and condemnation has become our identity. And so we have no other identity outside of that. I mean, I, I'm sure you've got girlfriends or, or boyfriends who... Um, they're always telling their sub story because the sub story is that is, is, is who they are. And everyone they meet, that's the first story they ever tell because that is their identity and that is what they're holding on to. And they hold on to it. And it's my story, my, my, my. They tell it as theirs. And so if you don't have another identity that you are walking towards, it can be difficult to let go of this identity that you have. The other thing that I picked from what you're saying is taking away the excuse means that I have to face up to my potential. I, I'm not ready to face up to my potential. So then I'm going to continue to 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 give the excuses and use this as my crutch because this is the crutch. And sometimes we have sang that story for so, so long as a man think it, so is he. We've thought it for so long. We've spoken as you will decree a thing and it will be established. And we have decreed it and told that story so much that we even believe in a lie. Mm -hmm. we know we know nothing else and you said that you need to replace the shame and the condemnation with something before you can heal because even the bible talks about when a demon is casted out of an individual it goes into the crossroad and it goes to find somewhere to go if it goes nowhere and it comes back to the place where it was casted out of and finds that place empty. It goes to get seven others, it was the seven or nine other stronger demons and comes to reoccupy. So that is what, and, and, and it proves the point that you were saying that for me to heal and for me to give up my shame, condemnation and guilt, I've got to replace it with someone, something, because I cannot be empty. I cannot let go of it and just be empty. I've got to put something else in. And it's the something else that people don't know. I, I, it, I have hated you all my life, or I have done this, or now if I'm taking away that hate, are you telling me to forgive and take it away? What am I replacing it? I don't know what to replace it with. So then I'm not even going to give up on that. And then you said, my obligation is not to the flesh, but to Christ and to God. Wow. Saints, 
I think you've got it all. It's all been wrapped up for you. Uh, uh, Dr. Liz, I think people need practical tools on how can I walk out of the place of abuse? I know it's become my identity. I mean, we've had one from Dr. Loretta. She says that change your identity, begin to look at your identity is in Christ. Focus on your identity in Christ and give up on this identity of shame, disgrace, and condemnation. That's one of the ways that I, I, I'm going to be able to walk away from it. What other ways do you think you want to suggest to people to walk away, to be able to walk away from this? Because people are stuck. I talk to a lot of people and they are stuck. That's right. Um, I think Dr. Larrader has said something so profound. People love to associate with that identity that they have and they don't want to let go of it because it either makes them feel good or they've got to sell that sub story so many times because of the attention they get from the story. Uh, but I would strongly recommend or suggest that sometimes you just need somebody else to push you out. Mm. If you're not willing to go, find yourself in a company of people that will push you out of that mess, mm. that will direct you to say, this is what you need to do to get out. You can do it by yourself. You need someone to raise you up. You need someone mm -hmm. to help need someone to counsel you, need someone to mentor you. It takes me back to the story of Hagar, um, Sarah and Abraham. We all know how obviously Sarah suggested to her husband to take Hagar in when she couldn't wait for the promise. Mm -hmm. And then the woman gets pregnant and then she has the son for um, Abraham. And then she gets prideful. She gets, gets into her head that she's brought in the only child into the family that could potentially become the heir of the promise. But when Sarah could not take the shame and the taunting that's, you know, and the condemnation and everything that was coming to her from her, um, the, her servants, she yeah. said, to her, you know what, this woman has to get out of this house, she has to go. Mm -hmm. And that was a way of pulling Hagar out of her shame. So, yes, I've been used, I only came in here to serve, but I've been used as some, someone who can provide a solution. So long awaited promise is not coming to pass. So although she has pride, she's working in pride and she's rebelling against her mistress, she's also, on the other hand, used by Abraham and Sarah to fulfill a desire or a longing or a need. So she's dealing with her own insecurities, her own shame, her own condemnation, and the fact that she's now prideful. So she's sent away by Abraham. Abraham, you know, Abraham says, go. And then now she goes from where they were and she finds herself wandering in the desert alone. So in that place in the desert with her son, the Bible says that the boy was so tired yes. and, and water. And then they encountered the angel of the Lord who came and showed them a well. And then, you know, she has this encounter where God says, I'm the one who sees you, I'm with you. So we have to get out sometimes, get away from that environment and then find out what happens on the other side. You know, that situation, because there's a dependency on comfort, we don't want to move. That situation sounds so good, that negativity that our story, some people sell the same sub story. I know, as I call it a pity party. Some people sell the same sub story. Every time you go around them, it's the same story. Oh, this happened to me. So what next? You know, this happened to me. So what next? You know, they like abuse, they like the story of rape, because it brings them to a place of, oh, you know, this happened to me. That's why use a way of not taking responsibility and moving forward and even when you cannot do that find yourself with people that will push you in that will just throw you onto the other side and when you get yeah. to the other side, find out if you can still hold on to that mess or you want to survive because in her situation there is no sarah to taunt and to mock anymore it's her little boy that needs to leave so she needs mm. to survive now. She needs to move away from mm. trying to be the hair or the, the most important person to now, I have to now leave. So when we're shown on the other side, we tend to leave the stop stories because when mm. life hits you, you forget that, you know, this happened to me because right now I need God's intervention. And if we mm. don't do it for ourselves, then God will do it because if he has a plan for us, he will kick us onto the other side and we have to let go of um, our mm. shame and condemnation. I think it ties in with what Dr. Loretta said, finding, and um, I mean, she's talked about prayer partner. Yes, prayer partner in this situation. But then I've got two ladies who are called my accountability partners. We've got to be accountable. You find people that you are transparent with. Mm. People who you can tell the truth to. People 
who are not there because of what you can give them. People who don't care about whether you're getting angry or getting upset. People who, who are not interested in the accolades and whatever you have become. People who will just strip you bare and tell you as it is. I mean, one of my friends, she would tell you as it is. I mean, we are both, she would cuss me to the cows come home. And sometimes even though I get upset about, about how what she said makes me feel, but when you go back, you, you, you know that she's told you right. And sometimes you may not admit it, but then she's told you. So you need accountability partners. You need prayer partners uh, 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 with you. I mean, this leads us nicely to the end of um, some of the practical tools. I mean, for me, I wanted to read Luke chapter Luke chapter uh, 8, verse 43 to 48, because I said for me, the woman with the issue of blood was the one, one of the story of coming from shame, condemnation, and, and, and guilt to blooming that, that, that pulls on my heartstring. Because this woman, we are told that she's bleeding for 12 years. And you need to understand when you read Leviticus chapter 15, uh, verse 19, going down, it talks about what bleeding meant. The Bible was clear, the laws at that time, that if you were bleeding, no one can come near you. Anyone that touches you is going to be unclean. They wash, and even after washing until evening, they, they are unclean. They can't sit where you sit. They can't lie where you lie. And so for 12 years going through this issue, it was a serious uh, uh, issue of condemnation and shame. However, we are told that Jesus comes into the place and this woman tugs on Jesus. And so for me, one of the ways to recover is to lean on Jesus, is to touch Jesus and be intentional about touching Jesus. Because when Jesus says, who touched me? Peter turned around and said, come on now, God, what are you talking about? So many people around you, so many people have touched you. And Jesus says, no, this touch is different. So we are not just talking about dipping your toes in and going to church once or twice, but being intentional about your recovery and being intentional about the fact that I'm going to hold on to this God, to Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith, because it is only him that can heal me. And that is the state the woman got to tug onto him so much more that virtue leaves him and connects to you to help you recover. So that is one of the ways that I believe that you can recover, spending time in the presence of God, saints. Seven, Christianity is not a day thing. It is a lifestyle. It is a constant mm -hmm. You, it's a lifestyle. It's no one that you dip in when all hell is breaking loose and when God delivers you, you go back to the club or go back out. It is a lifestyle. It is a way of living. Having a relationship with God, it's a way of living. Be in his presence. Sit in his presence at all times. Be with God at all times and you realize that he will continue to heal you and heal you as you go along. Any, any, any kind of advice that you will give, um, Dr. Loretta? I think we, we have to be okay with, as, as, you just, as you just said, moving along. I think that's the, the biggest part is you have to make up in your mind that I'm going to get past this. I'm going to serve God. I'm going to come out of this thing because we can find ourselves stewing in that identity, we can find ourselves sitting there. And as Pastor Liz said, um, find you someone that will, will push you out. And, and I'm, I can understand how challenging that could be, especially in today's time where everybody says, if you negative, get away from me. And if, if, you not bring, if you're not bringing something to my life, then you can't, you can't be a part of my life when you're inundated, when the world is inundating you with those kinds of things. But it is key, as both of you ladies have said, is that you have to be willing to move forward. You have to be willing to say, I've had enough. And personally, I would say you make the decision before God gets you to the point where you say, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Because you know, long before you get to that point of I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, you can make the decision to maybe do, to do different. Mm. Um, but when God get ready for you to do different, when he say, okay, that's enough. And you find yourself like at Jesus's feet weeping. Mm -hmm. You're sick and tired of being sick and tired. Oh, no. Do the work. And I say do the work. And, and I've said that a couple of times. 
I, what I mean by doing that is study the word, getting God's word. Oh. Study God's oh. word for your situation. Oh. Pray, create a prayer line. Oh. Decide and make this decision to separate yourself from those who cannot participate in your healing, but to okay. those who will keep you if for, and get yourself away from those who will keep you in the same state of mind and in the mm -hmm. same place. You want to guard what you hear, guard what you're listening to, guard what you're watching. I once had a young lady who said she was dealing with, um, she, was, she wanted to be married and she wanted to have a man and she was struggling with lust. I was like, well, what are you watching? And she was watching all those TV shows, those uh, Too Hot for Fire and, and you know, those all those dating shows they have on, on TV where everybody's half naked and, and you know, bi bathing suits, body suits, kissing. I was like, well, how are you ever going to get past that? One good episode of that. We all want to go somewhere. Do you know what I mean? So so just make sure you guard your, your heart and your ears and your eyes mm -hmm. and put in the work so that you can begin to not only just grow, but bloom into who God has called you to be. Amen, 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 amen. Dr. Liz, what last words have you got for us? Um, as Dr. Lorena was speaking, the scripture that came to mind was, except the kind of wheat falls to the ground and dies, he abides alone, but when it dies, it brings forth much fruit. So we all want to bloom, but the death has to come first. We Amen. all have to, or we can resurrect into full bloom. So um, in Psalm 1, it also says, Blessed is the man that does not work in the counsel of the wicked, for his delight is of the Lord, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. So our planting and our harvest has to be in the rivers of water. It has to be in God. We have to die in him so that he can bring us back up. So get into the place, put away everything, um, cast and anything that will draw you away from God's will, um, throwing away yesterday, letting the pain of yesterday go, letting the shame of yesterday go, and lifestyle choices, sin, sinful lifestyle. There are certain things that we know that, yes, we want to be Christian, we want to speak Christian, but things that we're dealing with, letting go of the weight that easily besets us. That's the scripture here putting that behind us and then allowing God to, you know, bring us to the place of full maturity and growth and expansion because he has a good plan for us. That's one of my favorite scriptures. I know the plans that I have for you. They are plans of good and not of evil to give you hope and the future and to bring you to the expected end. That expected end, end is God's, but our own responsibility is to walk with him as he takes us. And sometimes we may fall, we may make mistakes, you know, we're not saying that we will never make mistakes, but when we do make that mistake, our ability to come back like David will always come back, creating me a clean heart and renew right spirit with, within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. That Lord, please don't cut me out. Lord, mm. please, I'm sorry, I did wrong. Lord, I perceive things differently. You know what, God, I need to hear from you that you are still with me, that you love me. God mm. wants us to be like a child that, you know, you come to your, your dad or your mom and you say you're sorry. Mm. He can pardon you and leave one because we're not super, super women, we're just his, his, his children. Amen, amen, amen. Saints, you have had it all. These are practical tips that we can do by dwelling in the presence of God, allowing God to heal us, making a decision yourself to heal. You have got to make that decision and go to God and say, God, look, I've had enough. I'm sick and tired of what I'm going through and I want to be healed. Making a decision to walk away from those things that is destroying you, those things that is, those abusive situations, those shameful situations, those, those situations that bring condemnation in your life you're making a conscious decision the woman with the issue the, the woman with the at the well could have had the sermon that jesus told her and just gone back into her home with her husband number five or number six 
but she made that decision to go into the town to go and become an evangelist because that is what she always was. The woman that was brought before Jesus when they casted no stone at her, Jesus said, now go and sin no more. Mary Magdalene, when the demons was casted out of her, made a conscious effort that I am going to be hooked to this man. I'm going to be drunk on Jesus. And this is the one that I'm going to be with because she could have gone back to her situation and go back to where she was. So it is making that conscious effort to walk away from the things that are destroying you. Change your confession. Some of us, we literally have to change our confession. Some of us, we have to change our language. What words are you speaking over yourself? What words are you speaking over your situation? You've got to change your location. Some of us will physically have to change our location. You've got to drop everything and say, look, this place ain't working for me. Everything that represents the bad side of me is found here. I'm out. I'm going to a new place completely. Yes, some of us, some of us would have to change our sphere of influence, the people that are around us, the people that influence you, those that ring you up, hey girl, come on, let's go to the club or let's go and have a drink or let's go and hook up here and hook up there. We might have to change some of the people, those that are in our sphere of influence, because when you are trying to heal, you have to find people that have already healed to be around you. You've got to find people that resemble where you were going to, 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 to align yourself with and surround yourself with rather than still going with the same broke down beat down destroyed abused condemned people thinking that i'm going to save all of us together no sometimes it's better to go and save yourself and right. then come back and save someone yeah. else and then we must also make sure that we renew our mind. May God renew our mind about the problem that you were in and begin to bring the solution. And also always know that God, Pastor Liz said it, God always has a good plan for you. Look at whom God called you to be. And that is that person that you keep looking to and keep working towards to becoming that individual. Lifestyle choices, let go of the weight that easily beset you. Saints, these are the kind of practical tools that we will give you. Get an education. Mm. I mean, there was a stage in my life that I, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew that the job that I was in, I'd had enough. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I made a decision. I'm getting an education. In the midst of getting that education, I know something is going to change for me. I went to get an education. I found a business that has been now going on for over 15 years and doing well because I chose to go and get an education. I wanted to change my whole sphere of influence and the people that were around me because I had maxed the people that were around me at that stage. Currently, I'm in education. Again, I'd maxed the people that were around me and I'm thinking, okay, now I've got to move to the next level. Let me gain an education. And I'm not saying we're all going to gain an education, but it's one of the tools that you can use get an education because once you're in the education you meet it's not just the content that you are being taught in education it's the people that you surround yourself with it's the people that you form relationship with it's the people that you speak to and have communication it changes the way you perceive and begin to think about stuff thank you to to our our ladies oh my god you've been amazing this has been a wonderful three-part series I am just in awe. I am grateful. I am honored to be doing ministry with you guys. If this is selfless, we are just giving it out there, the tools out there to help other sisters and brothers. And I can't thank you enough. But I just ask, pray that God himself will bless you for the words that you've given out. May God bless you for the time that you've given out. May God replace it somewhere for you. Amen. 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 Everyone that God is through you in this process. Amen. Thank you so much for having us. We pray that you be blessed and may DP Global Ministries continue to reach the world, continue Amen. to take you places above and beyond where you can imagine or think. In Jesus' name, let it go. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Please like and please share with other people. God bless you and watch. Stay tuned. We've got more programs coming up.